Good morning, my boys. Today, we are very, very ambitious to complete reading the text, reading the poem. Today, we shall go through the third stanza, the third quatrain, and you will find, you will find after me, that this is the strongest stanza of the poem. Very beautiful, full of beautiful images. Uh, a very good imagery is also there. Uh, that is why this is the strongest of all the stanzas depicted in this poem. Let's start. I must go down to the seas again. Again, the quatrain begins with the same clause I told you earlier. I must go down to the seas again. I have no other way than making a voyage to the vagrant gypsy life. Again, the clause is followed by a prepositional phrase. The vagrant gypsy life is related with the uh, begin uh, with the initial with the uh, former clause uh, by the preposition to. I must go down to the seas again. I have to go to the seas. I have to uh, carry on with my voyage again. Uh, in which life? To that vagrant gypsy life. Vagrant means vagabond, tramp. So this is actually a noun. Vagrant, the word is actually a noun. But you see, here it describes the noun life. So it works uh, as an adjective here. And the word gypsy also uh, does the same thing. Gypsy is also a noun. You know the meaning of the gypsy, jajabar. Uh, a person or a group of persons who have no fixed shelter like us. Amadir Mutu Jadir Kunakta fixed body in a Yasrai name. In a look at gypsy goli. A person who is making voyage uh, must not have a specific shelter to live in. That is why the life is described as gypsy life. So here, vagrant and gypsy. Both the words are actually nouns, but both of them are describing the noun life. So, vagrant gypsy life is a nominal compound. Uh, at least gypsy life is a nominal, this phrase is a nominal compound. Here, vagrant is a noun, but used as an adjective. Gypsy is also a noun, but has been used as an adjective. So the poet wants to say that he must go to the seas again to make another voyage, to carry on with his voyage because he wants to be in that uh, vagrant life, in that life which has no specific shelter to the girl's way and the whale's way. Which path does the poet want to follow? He wants to follow the way which is carved like the seagulls and the whales, the seagulls in air and the whales in water carve the way for the poet, for a sailor. A sailor during his voyage often sees these two uh, creatures one in air and the other in the water so he wants to follow them he wants to follow the seagulls he wants to follow the whales where the winds like a weighted knife and following these paths following the path carved out by these creatures, he would like to reach the place where the wind is. Winds, wind apostrophe, yes? It means wind is. Uh, the wind is like a weighted knife. Weighted means sharpened or sharp. Jekhane batashta chhudir moto. Gai lagle mune hai shorita kete jat chaktam. So, the air in that place where he wants to reach is very very cold 
so cold that it seems to a man that a very sharp knife uh, just cut his skin. So sharp, so, so cold is the wind there and he wants to reach that place just following the way carved by the seagulls and the whales. Do you understand? So here is the image. Here is the image. We can get a picture here and such pictures are drawn with the words are called images. Here we have a very strong image um, where the wind winds like a wetted knife. We get a very strong image here. Uh, not quite soft. But now after that, after this strong image, uh, we can get very soft, very pleasant images too. Now come to the second rhymed couplet of the quatrain. And all I ask is a merry yearn. Yearn means tell, tell stories. And all I ask is a merry yearn. I would like to have, I want not uh, many things. I do not want many things. During my voyage and after reaching my destination, all I ask is a merry yearn from a laughing fellow rover. I would like to listen to the very jolly tales, jolly tales from a very jolly uh, companion who is also a sailor like me. So the poet wants a very jolly companion, uh, fellow sailor, rover means sailor. And he wants to listen to very lovely, very pleasant stories from that fellow rover. Here, the imagery is very soft, very pleasant, you know. The uh, expression Mary Yard and Laughing Fellow Rover, these both images are very pleasant images. And it often reminds me again of John Keats, who in the sonnet that I uh, mentioned yesterday, that is, um, to one who has been long in city bend. He also tells the same thing, tells the same desire, not in the seas, but he would like to recline on very small, a uh, very uh, green wavy grass and wants to read a debonair and pleasant stories. So these are soft images. And you know, you can notice easily <clears throat> that a sharp image is, is immediately followed by two very soft images. So this quatrain is a, a, what should I say, a fear of different images, an, an accumulation of different images. Sometimes the images is, image is harsh and sometimes very pleasant. So the image of weighted knife, is immediately followed by two very pleasant images. What is image? I told you just a few minutes before. A picture drawn with the help of words is called an image. So the poet wants to follow the, the way carved by the seagulls and also by the wells and wants to reach the place where the wind is very cold, wind is very unpleasant, but he will get pleasure even there uh, from his very jolly uh, fellow rover, jolly companion who is also a sailor like him and he would listen to the very pleasant tales told by that fellow rover. He wants something else that is also uh, not very difficult to think and get. He wants 
and quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long trick's over he also wants very good sleep and sweet dream during his sleep when a man is relaxed enough he can dream sweet dreams pleasant dreams pleasant dreams are the outcome of our relaxed mind so the poet has reached his destination maybe it is very temporary maybe he would have to restart resume his journey the next day or the day after the next day still he is relaxed for that that day as he has already reached his temporary destination for the day and so he is relaxed and he would sleep a very good sleep very quiet sleep absolutely devoid of any anxiety and during his sleep he would like to have a very sweet dream when the long tricks over trick means koushal trick ke banglay bole koushal kintu ekhane to ta noy when the long tricks over trick is over when the long trick is over here trick means refers to here trick the word trick refers to his voyage and the meaning you can get the meaning here the journey the journey that he was undergoing the journey so when his journey will be over might be uh, it might be temporary uh, maybe it is for that day only still when his journey will be over for the day when he will reach his destination for the day he would like to have a very quiet sleep without any anxiety and during his sleep he wants to have a sweet dream so we have at least four very soft images in the last rhymed couplet of the poem a merry yarn a laughing fellow rover a quiet quiet sleep a sweet dream these four images are very soft images and this um, last quatrain is a juxtaposition of harsh and soft images can you see it uh, very distinctly so we have completed reading the text now we have to sum up this third stanza so the third and the final stanza brings the theme of wanderlust brings the theme of his strong desire of wandering to the forefront it becomes the principal thing in our mind the final quatrain is full of positive imagery we have at least four very positive images here i told you earlier just a minute back but there is a contrasting image image too we have absolutely opposite image also in this stanza also the poet mentions the wind and you know you can find here also in this stanza we have again the mention of the wind the poet mentions the wind so in all the stanzas wind has been mentioned uh, so we can the mention of the wind in every stanza by the poet the poet mentions the poet tells us about the wind in each of the stanzas why perhaps to draw attention to the very um, to the very way in which ships are, are influenced both by man and by two of the most powerful natural forces the sea and the wind he uses the sea he uses the wind in all the stanzas because perhaps perhaps because he wants to tell us that a man can enjoy the voyage a, can, a man can undergo the voyage 
but it is not solely his uh, attempts his efforts that can uh, that can make him able to overcome all the difficulties of a voyage the sea and the wind must also help you him otherwise he can never succeed in his voyage okay my boys now what is the message conveyed through this poem we have to learn the message conveyed through this poem a life at sea is full of contrasts a life at sea is full of contrasts cruel winds and wild waves we can get there in the sea we can get in the sea cruel winds and wild waves but they are in perfect harmony together with the sweet and endless freedom that it allows but at the same time a man a sailor can in uh, can expect absolute freedom in the seas not not a uh, quite bound of life as we face in the uh, land in our day to day life so the message is a very positive message if you wants to enjoy freedom get rid of this very secured sheltered life on the land be vagrant be a gypsy and try to undergo the life on the seas because then only you can get a free life of the freedom in the true sense of the term okay my boys now we have completed reading the text and the next day tomorrow we shall walk out the activities okay bye for today